course, this is your lead scientist, Miss Shirley. Today's lesson is, who is John James Audubon? In this lesson, you will learn that the Nature Center is an Audubon Center. It was named after a naturalist named John James Audubon. John James Audubon was so important to Miss Maddock because he was made Miss Maddock. He was what made Miss Maddock want to become a naturalist. John James Audubon was an American ornithologist, naturalist, and painter. His combined interest in art and ornithology, who is an expert on birds or a person who studies birds, turns into a plan to draw pictures colored by hand to record all of the bird species of North America. In the last lesson, students learned the following. The habitat in these pictures is not the forest, it is a wetland habitat. Students observe the following in the habitat. They hear bullfrogs, they see red-winged blackbirds, egrets, and dragonflies. Students keep track of what they observe by counting the animals they see and record everything in their notebooks. Let's introduce some words we need to learn for this lesson. A nature center is a place where visitors can go to see different plants and animals in their habitat. A magnifying glass is a tool that helps see things up close. Ornithologist is a person who studies or is an expert on birds. Okay, science explorers, we're going to learn more about who was John James Audubon, and we are going to explore and investigate some questions about John James Audubon. Let's begin. I'm going to read this passage. The class goes into a building at the Nature Center. Students will spend some time there comparing what they recorded in their notebooks. The sign on the front of the building says Audubon Center. Mrs. Maddock asks, does anyone know why this place is called the, an Audubon Center? Then she explains, the name on the building refers to a naturalist named John James Audubon. This nature center is part of a big organization of many nature centers named after Mr. Audubon. The students also, also discovered that learning about John James Audubon is what made Miss Maddock want to become a naturalist. Okay, science explorers, let's explore some questions. What do the students do inside the nature center building? Think, 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 science explorers, write your response. Why is the nature center called the Audubon Center? Think, 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 science explorers. Write your response. Why was John James Audubon important to Miss Maddock? Think, 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 science explorers. Write your response. Let's learn a little bit more about John James Audubon. He was an American ornithologist. An ornithologist is a person who studies birds. He was also a naturalist and a painter. His combined interest in art and ornithology turned into a plan to make a complete picture story all the birds of North America. It was printed between 1827 and 1838. It contains 435 life-size watercolors of birds before photos existed. To summarize, do you think you would like to visit a nature center in your borough? And why? Please explain. Think, 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 science explorers. Write your response. And finally summarize, as a reflection, let's read an Audubon Society book about Butternut Pond, a nature center. And then we're going to answer the questions within the Butternut Pond Ed Puzzle. So let's watch this video. Butternut Hollow Pond by Brian J. Hines. Illustrated by Bob Marstall. Daybreak at Butternut Hollow Pond. Sunbeams fall in slender shafts through a canopy of swamp maples. The water is dappled in a confetti of pale light. Dewdrops sparkle on the reeds. A warm breeze ripples over the water and awakens the insects along the shore. Water striders stand on delicate legs, skating the surface in short pulses. Below them, whirligig beetles tumble and dive in the shallows like a troop of acrobats. It is not safe here. 
Young bluegills hover under a blanket of duckweed and dart out to gobble up the unlucky insects. Mosquitoes, gnats, and mayflies rise from shore grasses on lacy wings. A breath of air carries them over the water. There is danger here, too. A dragonfly cruises in at a high speed, his double wings beating a blur above his gleaming green body. Snap, snap! Mosquitoes are snatched in midair by his powerful jaws. But even the dragonfly is not safe. The tree swallows are here, too. Swish! The birds plummet from the branches, looping and diving like combat aircraft. Their sharp wings tilt and twist in sudden turns as they pursue their prey. Their short beaks open wide and the insects disappear. A moment later, the dragonfly is gone. It's good to be quick in butternut hollow. Mid-morning at Butternut Hollow Pond. Five mallard ducklings take to the water, weaving behind their parents like floats in a parade. They tip their fuzzy bottoms up and pull away soft mouthfuls of water shamrock. But deep in the mud, a monster lies in wait. He has heard the splashing. He has seen the tiny webbed feet kicking above him, and he rises slowly. The snapping turtle drags his heavy body from the pond bottom. Long strands of al green algae cover the jagged shell on his back. He stretches his long neck upward and opens his powerful beak. Splash! Crack! The gaping jaws slam shut as the water boils around him. Quack, quack! Flapping madly, the ducks charge for cover under an overhang of roots in the pond's bank. Mother and father mallard count their brood. One, two, three, four, five. Sometimes you're lucky in Butternut Hollow. A few downy feathers bob on the ripples as the great turtle sinks out of sight and settles in the dark ooze to wait again. The commotion has disturbed a pumpkin seed, which bursts from the shadows seeking safety. He has made a mistake. Another hunter is waiting as the speckled side of the fish flash briefly in the sunlight. The heron has been patient, motionless. Quick as a blink, the long bill stabs the water. The fish is seized and swallowed whole. And the heron is still again. Noon at Butternut Hollow Pond. On the hillside meadow above the pond, wildflowers sway in a crazy quilt of colors. The air is filled with the songs of hundred bees. A woodchuck trims the sweet grasses as his rumbly body shakes aimlessly over the ground. Nearby, a cottontail suddenly sits erect. He listens. He looks. A broad shadow passes over the hill. The cottontail explodes into motion and zigzags into the blueberry thickets. Now the woodchuck knows something is not right in Butternut Hollow, and he scrambles for his burrow. The marsh hawk ends his swift glide, trapping the air in splayed feathers. The woodchuck clambers along just ahead. The hawk's curved talons stretch out before him, and they close on nothing as the woodchuck disappears into his hole. The hawk turns and beats his way upward until he is once again scouting Butternut Hollow in wide circles, while the white-tailed deer leads her fawn to drink at the cool water. Okay, science explorers. You are going to be answering some questions in this Ed Puzzle. After we finish, I want you to to ask you what do you think of today's lesson. Okay, science explorers, we've learned today all about John James Audubon and a little bit about what he's done for the study of birds. Okay, until next time, ciao for now.